Simon Chopo Chimbetu lived the life of a true icon. The highs were glamorous and stupefying as he unwound the pain, the struggle, and the joys of ordinary Zimbabweans in heartwarming lyricism. And while he was at it, he created a soul smooching sound we all love called Dendera. The lows were redoed with heartbreaking and chastising controversies that eventually drew a wedge between him and his fans. But, like the iconic Top Gun character, Tom Mitchell, he was a maverick in every sense of the word, who left a glittering mark in music, culture, and history that won't be erased in the memory of Zimbabwe. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the life and legacy of Simon Chimbetu. Hello viewers, my name is Mufuzi and I'll be making more videos about legendary music figures in Zimbabwe. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Let's get into the video. Simon Chimbetu was born on the 23rd of September in 1955. He was born in the Msengezi area of Mbire district in Mashonaland province to an immigrant couple from Bea, Tanzania. The couple were Kosam Makwalile Shembeto and his young wife Elizabeth Mwai Muchiwanga. Now, the Chimbetu name came about as a mispronunciation by the Shon speaking residents Kosam lived amongst, who found Chimbetu rolling off the tongue easier than. Shembeto. As if butchering his surname wasn't enough, Kosam earned himself a nickname, Benson, due to his comic nature and storytelling ability. Henceforth, Kosam Makalele Shembeto became known as Benson Chimbeto, and the name stuck. Now, Kosam and Elizabeth had eight children, namely Saiwe, born in 1950, Esnat, born in 1953, Simon, born in 1955, Nison, born in 1956, Ibrahim, born in 1964, Anna, born in 1966, Sophia, born in 1969, and Alan. Born in 1972. There are conflicting schools of thought on whether Simon Chimbetu participated in the second Chimbrenga. The most plausible explanation that highlights his contribution or leg thereof was from his brother in law who claimed that Simon was one of the children abducted from a school in Msengezi by the gorillas, but was asked to return home because he was too young. Upon return in Chegutum, Simon's father was afraid he would get conscripted by the Rhodesian army, so he sent him away to Salisbury to live with his sister and her husband in Gellingham, present day Zivarasekwa. A year later, his young brother Nison followed him to the capital city where Simon was working at 
a tobacco processing plant and writing music with his little brother in their spare time. Back then, bands were hot and everyone wanted to have their own. However, the Chimbetu brothers did not have a band nor could they play instruments. But their passion led them to perform at various bars without a band just to showcase their vocal talent. This is what Nixon had to say about their predicament. Almost every weekend we would go to this bar in Zwarasekwa, buy some beer and find a secluded place to sit. Then after drinking two or three mugs, we would start singing. Some of the songs we sang were Sangor Noera, Mmanawe Dangwe, and Sekurundipe Ozano. People would gather around us as we sang. Some of them cheered us on. This encouraged us so much that we would travel to places as Mavuku and Jitungiza, singing in bars. Sometimes we would board a bus, sit at the back, and start singing. As the Bible says, Knock and the door shall be open for you. Around 1978, while performing at a bar, legendary music producer Chris Mutema, who discovered Thomas Mofumo, heard the Chimbetu brothers and was in love with the harmonious voices. Immediately, he sought to fix their impending issue of not having a band and he sent them to Zex Manatsa, then an already established artist with multiple hits to his name. Zex Manatsa couldn't offer the boys his band as he was in the middle of recording his album, so the Chimbeto brothers went back to Chris Mutema. Chris came up with a cunning idea that would catapult the Chimbetu brothers into fame. He sent the brothers to Mushandra Pamo Hotel, then the residents of Joseph Ngoi and the OK Success Band. However, the partnership started on a rocky patch, it is narrated by Nyson. We told Ngoi about our songs and that Matema had sent us to him. But for days, he, him and his group members ignored us. One day, after loitering at the hotel, Ngoi asked us to sing for him. When he heard us, he told the members we had good songs. Joseph and his band agreed to play for the Chimbetu brothers and share their weekly slot at the hotel. They also helped the brothers record their first singles, Nerera and Kosam. Their single, Nerera, was very popular and they toured playing in St. Mary's Hall, Spider's Web, and Mutanga Nightclub. But soon, the crowds were clamoring for the Chimbeto brothers more than they did for Joseph and the OK Success Band. Seeing the power shift, Joseph started to refuse playing for the Chimbetus, and the hotel had to cut him loose. Is they back their newfound stars. The Chimbetu brothers had an audience, but not a band. So they went back to Chris Mutema for help. Chris pointed them in the direction of the Sungura boys, who were then a resident band at Merevechena Hotel in Dombosha. The Sungura boys, fronted by Ephraim Joe, relocated to Harare and started backing the Chimbetu brothers. They eventually recorded more singles being backed by the Sungura boys, which included Patakatsika, Sarura Wako, Denda, Tejarawaramba, and Ndirim Soja. Once again, the Sungura boys felt they were taking a back seat to the Chimbetu brothers as they did not have a prolific singer or songwriter. To counter the popularity of the Chimbetu brothers, they robbed then budding vocalist John Chibadura 
from Mawanera superstars to sing and compose songs with them. The new arrangement made both groups share the stage at different time slots, but the Sungura boys, like the OK Success band before them, started boycotting blank for the Chimbetus in their time slot. The situation became unattainable and the hotel had to beg the, the Chimbetu brothers again and fired the Sungura boys. Having gained valuable experience and popularity, plus the hotel's instruments, the Chimbetu brothers decided to form their own band, recruiting George Farrell on lead, Stuart Majoni on bass, Ja Wekumbare Mukwati on drums, and the icon Solo Makori on rhythm forming what we have come to know as the Marxist Brothers. The name Marxist Brothers was inspired by the Marxist theory of Karl Marx, which is a social, political and economic theory that focuses on the struggle between capitalists and the working class. Max wrote that the power relationships between capitalists and workers were inherently exploitative and would inevitably create class conflict. Now, this was the foundation of Marxist Brothers music and later on Simon Chimbetu. Their music mainly addressed the struggle of the working class, which was a strong theme in Rhodesia and later on Zimbabwe. The Marxist brothers recorded and released their first album, Manoa Dangwe, in 1983, which had hits like the title track, Manoa Dangwe, and Goodbye Sandra. They followed their debut album with Kunjere Kunjere in 1985, which produced timeless classics like the title track, Kunjere Kunjere, and Sekurundi Peozan. It was not until their third album that they started going by Orchestra Dendera Kings, but still maintained the Marxist Brothers title on the cover art. The album was called Dendera Resango, released in 1986. This was the first time they had put a definitive name to their sound, which has stood the test of time. The name Dendera was derived from the ground hornbill, which is known as Dendera in Shona. Why the Dendera bird? There are two theories to this fact. Theory number one, the birds like to move in pairs and they sing together. So they signify the two brothers and they rightly call themselves Dendera kings. Theory number two, the Dendera bird makes a bass melody which inspired the unique bass riffs that defined the Dendera sound. Now, Dendera Resango produced three stone cold hits. The title track, Dendera Resango, Ndiyamre Mukoma, and Dr. Nero, a reference track Nice and Chimbetu. The Marxist brothers released their fourth and final album titled Africa in 1987, which had timeless hits like Mugzi Munderinge, Mungawango, and Nafunga Kumosha. That's it for today. Make sure to catch us on the next video as we focus on the solo career of Simon Chopa Chimbetu. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Peace.